Heavyweight Boxing, former champion Mike Rossman against Luke Capuano. Hello, everyone. I'm Tim Ryan here at the Conrad Hilton Hotel in Chicago, where today we have the stuff of which boxing novels are made, the Pete Hamill variety, perhaps. A club fighter by the name of Luke Capuano, who got his big chance against the next champion, Mike Rossman, last November. He said if he lost that fight, he would retire from boxing, go back to a full-time job with his wife and son and another child on the way. However, he fought so well, he decided to give another try. For Rossman, it was a real test in his second comeback. Of course, he's been through a bit of estrangement with his father, Jimmy DiPiano, who had been his manager. After losing to Victor Galindez, the man from whom he had lifted the light heavyweight crown, and since then, he lost to Ramon Ronquillo. He's trying to battle his way back into the top of the light heavyweight ranks at the age of 24. On the other hand, Capuano, a 27-year-old club fighter, now sees for the first time in his life a chance to make some bigger money in boxing. So today, the rematch is here. And we've got Angelo Dundee and Gil Clancy with us, as usual, to provide our commentary. And Angelo, tell us about Luke Capuano. Uh, you've watched the tapes of the fight against Rossman. You know a little bit about him. What kind of a fighter? Well, that was a real brawl. I, I expect that Luke Capuano will be a little sharper this time because he did uh, get, come close to getting knocked out in the late round. Uh, I feel that Luke Capuano is the type of kid that everybody likes to see. Uh, in with uh, Mike Rossman, the former champion, uh, I think he was overcome by that. I think this time he'll be a better fighter. Sid Martin brought in to train him. We'll add a couple of wrinkles to the guy. I make it a very difficult fight. It's going to add up to a very simple thing. Who wants it the most? Who wants it the most, Gil? Well, Rossman is a former champion. He has to win the fight. You know, he's more experienced, a better puncher, a better boxer. Why is Capuano in there? He's in there because he's got great determination, takes a great punch, and he has that hometown crowd behind him. That could be a factor. Well, Capuano had never been more than eight rounds before his 10-round fight with Rossman, and part of the reason he lost that fight was that he faded badly in the final couple of rounds. And you heard Angelo mention Sid Martin, the veteran trainer from New York. They brought him in to try and tune him up strategy-wise and also improve his stamina, and he says he's ready to go the full 10 this afternoon here in Chicago. And Joe Clancy alluding to the hometown crowd. Well, indeed, there are about 2,000 fans here. Most of them are Capuano fans from his district on the west side. They've been having brunch, awaiting this main event in the ballroom of the Conrad Hilton, and they are ready to cheer on their hometown favorite. Capuano with 20 victories, three losses, no draws, 19 knockouts, moved into the top 10 for the first time in his career just recently. He's ranked number 10 by the WBA. Mike Rossman, 39 wins. Six losses, three draws, 26 knockouts. Currently rated eighth in the WBA, ninth in the WBC. He's just 24 years of age. It seems like he's been around a lot longer, but that's because his boxing career has been filled with all kinds of interesting events. As we look at Luke Capuano, who started boxing at the age of 14, his father, Paul, took him to the CYO gyms, and he eventually won a local Light heavyweight title there at 16. He turned pro in 1978. Hasn't beaten anybody of note. His last fight, a second round knockout of Jimmy Clark in January. And there you see the difference in height, which provides a Rossman with some reach advantage of about four inches. And uh, today, Capuano had a little difficulty making the weight. He came in at 176, and Rossman weighed in at 175. The referee is Stanley Berg from Chicago. The judges are Larry Rosadilla from Manhattan Beach, California, and Tony Perez from New York City. The five-point must system, in effect. Rossman in the black trunks with the red stripe. Actually, it's a royal blue, but it'll appear black on your screen. And Capuano in the black trunks with a white stripe. Rossman started out like he means business. Jimmy Clark, beautiful fist combination. Left hook underneath, right hand on the chin. In the first fight, Capuano just stayed on him, got his head right on Rossman's chest, banged away to the body and head. And while he landed a lot of punches, he didn't seem to be able to hurt Rossman, although he did succeed in opening a cut over his eye in the later round. But Rossman just had a lot more left at the end. I'll tell you, uh, Tim, the problem's going to be with these ropes. These ropes are put in improperly. The top rope is angled to the outside. The lower rope is to the inside. So anybody lays in his ropes will be with his back bent over. So both guys got to watch out about staying on those ropes. Good point, Angelo. And there uh, was a lot of time spent on the ropes in the first fight. Rossman did a lot of his fighting from the ropes in November of last year. 
You know, in the first fight, they both were head-to-head -head for the entire fight. Both fighters told me they were going to try to use their jab more and stay outside. So far, that's what they're doing. Caparano showed that overhand right. That's one of his favorite punches. Caparano on the left of your screen. Mike Rossman on the right. Caparano's definitely fighting Rossman's fight. You can't fight it from a distance. Rossman's got better, longer reach. Uh, Caparano will change his strategy shortly. First round of a scheduled 10 round from Chicago, Illinois. Coming up, the Glen Campbell Los Angeles Open here on CBS. Under a minute to go, round one. The ring canvas is not going to bother either fighter. It's a very slow ring. In fact, you see wrinkles in the canvas. Both kids are wearing rubber bottom shoes, so that's not going to be a factor either. This is a game of last tag. Whoever, whoever lands the punch, the other guy throws one right back. Under 30 seconds to go, round number one. Mandatory eight count is in effect here in Illinois. It's three knockdown rule in effect. Five point must system. Good left hand from Capuano. Big, big punch. Capuano suffered a cut right near the end of that round. We believe it came from contact uh, from the head of Mike Rossman, not from a blow. It is bleeding now. It is over the inside of the right eyebrow, almost above the bridge of the nose, and the blood is streaming down, as you can see, the bridge of his nose. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It, it's in a bad spot, Tim, because the blood's going to flow right into his eye. They're going to have to stop that cut, or this fight's going to be stopped. Sid Martin working his corner with his manager, Sam Pizzoli, who's a Chicago policeman from his neighborhood on the west side. And his other trainer is Primo La Casa, who's been with him throughout his 23-fight professional career. Mike Rossman, managed now by his brother, Andrew DiPiano, and trained by Vin Carlesimo. The round, if this fight goes to, uh, this round goes to limit, Tim, uh, this round, actually, I think Sid will be able to contain that cut because it doesn't seem to be that dangerous on top. I think the bleeding is just going to be profuse maybe for this round, but it's a cut you can contain. That's right. That's right, Andrew. It takes a little time for the, for the cut stuff to catch in there and hold, but usually for a round it'll bleed. By next round, he should have it stopped. Now, that's provided Rossman doesn't get a whole lot more punishment on it. We haven't, uh, did not see a particular blow that caused it, and we can only assume it may have come from some contact, advertent or inadvertent, near the end of that first round. Contact from the head of Rossman. Rossman threw a real good right hand in that exchange right near the end of the round. I mean, that might have done it, because his back was towards us. We couldn't notice it, Tim. It may have been a punch. Those kind of things happen. But 90% of your cuts are by butts or by elbows. We're in the second round, scheduled for 10. Tim Ryan, Angelo Dundee, and Joe Clancy. Scheduled 10 round light heavyweight bout. Mike Rossman continuing his second comeback. Just the age of 24. Luke Capuano, basically a club fighter. He said himself, I haven't fought anybody better than me. Same kinds of fighters until he fought Mike Rossman the first time. Big right hand by Capuano, Tim. Big right hand. Capuano stuck a left hand out and it landed. That's what he's got to do more of, a left jab like that. Oh, and that's what he said he was going to do before the fight, try to use his jab a little more. Under 30 seconds to go in the second round. But he did not jab much in the first fight. He's content to get his nose right on Rossman's chest and bang away inside. He did pretty well with that until the later rounds. Final seconds of round number two. On it again, uh, Ange, maybe it'll, it'll hold up. What do you think? Yeah, it's a, it, it definitely, uh, Gil, it, was, it must have been a butt because a V-shaped cut. When they get that, that kind of a shape on them, they, it was a butt or an elbow. It was inadvertent because they were both throwing punches at each other. 
Round number three of this scheduled 10 rounder live from Chicago, Illinois. Rossman has a swelling over his eye also, uh, over his right eye. And his left eye is swollen also. So he's, he's catching some punches in there. Rossman in the dark blue trunks with the red white stripe. Capuano in black with a white stripe. Good right hand from Rossman landed. A little different pattern in this one than the first time around. Both fighters trying to box more than they did in the first fight. Well, that could be a mistake for Capuano because he's giving Rossman room. He's got to stay on top of Rossman and make a brawl out of him. He's not going to outbox him. He doesn't have the combinations that Rossman has. Luke Capuano, an employee of the Chicago Parks Department, as his father is Paul. Wife Jenny expecting their second child. He has a son, Paul. He said earlier when he went into that Rossman fight, biggest payday of his life back in November, he was planning on calling it quits if he lost, but he did better than even he expected. Very close decision going to Rossman. Decided to continue his boxing career. Bigger payday this time, and with a victory, might continue on in the light heavyweight ranks. Perhaps a more meaningful fight for the confused and embittered Mike Rossman. They both slow down. Uh, it looks like they're both trying to outthink each other, which is a mistake on both their part. to go round three. Could be a mistake for Rossman to worry about opening up that cut more instead of staying to his battle plan because you look to do one thing, you, you, you vary from what you want to do in there. I think Rossman should continue to box the guy. You know, Angie, I always felt that way when I was working corners. I never told my guys to work on a cut. A lot of time the guy's looking to protect the cut, you can hit him every place else. Crowd a little quiet in this dinner table Snap setting here as we approach the end of round three. This is round number four. Rossman coming out with a right hand lead. I didn't like what went on in the corner there, but the doctor called the referee over and told him to be aware of the cut and watch it for bleeding. I think Sid's got that cut under control. That shouldn't be a factor right now. The referee is Stanley Berg from Chicago. Rossman on the attack landed a good right hand. You notice the ropes him, the kid bounded off him. His back went, went, went further back than his, in his body. Judges are from out of state. Larry Rosadilla from California. Tony Perez from New York. Both very respected referees in their own right. The referee Berg is from Chicago. You know, the, the reason that these guys wind up inside all the time is when, both of them, when they jab, they lunge with their jab and they're following their full weight behind it and they fall on the other guy. Neither guy is circling when he jabs. You notice that? See, there they go. When a guy jabs, he charges right at the other fighter. I like to see that jab when you're doubling it, triple it, moving around. Pick the guy apart a little bit. Well, you know, Mike Rossman was able to bounce and move and do a lot of things. That's why he won that title. He's not actually doing that, Gil. He's not using his balance and his distance. And what's happening, they're both falling in. Capuana can't do any better, but Rossman shouldn't be doing that. They're both right in front of each other all the time. There's no such a thing as side to side with these two guys. And there's really no strategy. Just talk to them. Think of it. Give me hard, Mike. What's that shit? That's right. Capuano lands, but without a lot of sting. 
I thought they would resort to that, Tim, at the, the top of the show. I thought they would go back to what they did the last time, because this is what they both know how to do. Well, you know, when Galindis won the championship from, uh, I mean, excuse me, when Rossman won the title from Galindis, he out fought him inside, and that's the way he won the title. I and mean, Galindis was some strong guy. Well, these two going toe-to-toe -to -toe now in this fourth round. Rossman contends to stand flat-footed against the ropes. Rossman's throwing his punches with direction. Capuano has no direction on his punches. He's just letting them go. Fight changing totally here in this fourth round. We're coming to the end of round number four. Hoffman scoring heavily inside. The scheduled 10 round light heavyweight bout, and Rossman lands with an overhand right. Rossman in the dark blue trunks with red and white stripe. Luke Capuano, the local hometown boy, in the black trunks with a white stripe. Rossman taking charge in the fourth round, fighting inside and fighting effectively. Rossman, his father Jimmy DiPiano here at the fight, and near his corner, but as Rossman says, I don't talk to him about boxing anymore. Capuano was trying to box at the start of this round, and as Angelo pointed out, that's the biggest mistake he can make because he gives Rossman room. He has to stay inside. I'll tell you one thing, he takes a real good shot, because I know Rossman could punch. And he got hit with a real good right hand, right on the chin, and it didn't phase him, Gil. Well, that's, that's what's keeping him in there, that the determination and the fact that he can take a punch. And again, you know, he's got those hometown fans yelling, Luke, Luke. It sounds like Luke Pinello in Yankee Stadium when he gets up the bat. like to alert our stations along the line. We'll be going to a station break at the end of this fifth round. Joe Clancy, Angelo Dundee, and Tim Ryan live from the Conrad Hilton Hotel in Chicago, Illinois. Pace is slowed down to a walk now. One guy's got to start picking up gears or shifting gears and try to take charge. But that's what wins fights, and that's what's going to have to happen in here. Lukey's got to really go, 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 and do make something happen. Had that overhand right lead. Rossman blocked most of it. There he scores for the year. Capuano had Rossman in some trouble along the ropes, but was unable to finish him off. And let's see whether Rossman can get revived here in the sixth round. He has an abrasion under his left eye and a slight cut right on the middle of his chin. Overhand lead by Capuano. Just grazed Rossman, didn't really connect it well. Rossman back in the corner was bleeding, I mean, breathing real heavy in the corner for, for no reason. Uh, you know, I think it took a lot out of him that shit. Oh, shot, big right hand. Right hand, hand. Big right, hand, hand right on his chin. Rossman rocked again by Capuano. I hate to see this, Gil. This is shades of Ranquello. Remember that night, that big right hand? And it was all over? Yes, after he got hit with that punch, he wasn't Rossman anymore. His, his face is all mocked up now, Tim. It's, he's got abrasions under both eyes. He's bleeding under the chin. He looks like a fighter that's had a lot of wear and tear. And he's holding. 
uh, the Capuano's cut got real bad right then and there. It's starting to bleed profusely again. Capuano's cut is over his right eyebrow, his left eyebrow, pardon me, near the bridge of his nose. Both fighters are tired. Capuano expended a lot of energy last round. He's starting to show signs of wear out there. This is a battle of attrition. We're in the sixth round of the scheduled 10 round. And remember, we'll be going out to Los Angeles for the Glen Campbell Los Angeles Open Golf Tournament immediately following our boxing coverage. So stay with us all afternoon on CBS Sports. What a thriller of a basketball game going down to the wire. Lakers and the Knicks in exciting light heavyweight action now. Under a minute to go in round number six. Rossman's put, uh, getting hit with that left jab pretty easily now, Gil, because he can't get out of the way that's of right. it. That's right. That's right. When you get tired, it's easy to hit a guy with a left jab. You know, all trainers, they always tell their fighter in the first round, go out and jab. The late rounds is when you should jab a guy because he's dead. You can't get away from him. Well, Gil, it's going to boil down to what we were discussing. It's going to be the guy that wants it more. Right now, this will prove who's going to be the guy to win it. Under 30 seconds to go in the sixth round. Both cut men have done a good job. Sid Martin with Capuano's cut over his left eyebrow. Ed Aliano with the cut under the left eye of Rossman and on his chin. Coming to the end now of round number six. Oh. A little bit different pattern in the fight. But uh, action-packed as that one was, which Rossman won by a very narrow split decision. And the, uh, well, I'll give you the video just slightly ahead on our unofficial card. If the fight continues to go this way, I think Rossman's experience is going to stand up. He, for for Capuano to win, I think he's going to have to land a big bomb and really hurt Mike. The experience should start to tell now in the late round. If you don't get the ball in bounds, it's the effect of the punch. I don't think he's over that punch. 27-year-old Luke Capuano, Chicago Parks Department employee. Really just a club fighter. Got a shot against Rossman last November and acquitted himself well. A little bigger paid Port Aaron, of course. I think Sid Martin's got Capuano's ear. He's got him boxing. He's got him slipping that right hand right now, and it looks very effective out there. But what I think what he's trying to do is rest him for a round. He spent a lot of energy, but outside he can get picked off the way he did just then. Right hand from Rossman picking him off. The weight championship WBC version, Matthew Saad Muhammad against Von Zell Johnson, the challenger. 4.30 on the CBS Sports Spectacular. Rossman uses experience in close. He tries to walk Capuano around. He hasn't been able to move Capuano, and he couldn't move him in the first fight either. He's a very strong young man, Capuano. Followed by one a minute to go, round number seven. A lot, a lot has to be said for this kid because he's not letting that cut bother him. Again, Sid, Sid Martin did a great job on that cut. There's not one drop of blood coming out now. You're gonna see here. Referee is Stanley Berg of Chicago. The judges Larry Rosadilla and Tony Perez. Two respected referees during the scoring as judges today on the five-point bus system in Illinois. seconds left in the seventh round. Capuano's only been 10 rounds once in his life. That was in his last fight against Rossman. Brian with Gil Clancy and Angelo Dundee, round eight of this light heavyweight, uh, light heavyweight fight from the Conrad Hilton Hotel in Chicago. Next week, championship light heavyweight action. Matthew Saad Muhammad against the challenger, Bonzel Johnson. Saturday at 4.30 here on CBS. They told Rossman in the ball. They're going to take Capuano apart. Capuano is giving Rossman too much room. He can't fight him that way. He's got a wing. Spent a lot of energy. Didn't get the job done. Took a shot. Under a minute to go in round eight. Rossman took Capuano's uh, best licks in the first fight without any real severe damage. And he got through that fifth round. That might have been all that Capuano had to offer. We'll see how he finishes up here in the final two rounds. 
He's fighting right now like he's stuck in mud. His punches are slow. He's just winging him out there and being counted by Rossman beautifully. Second win, Andrew. It's all over, man. I don't think there's any such thing as a second win tonight. I think this kid's got to go for broke, or no way you're going to get lucky. Time winding down in the eighth round. Remember, we'll be going to the Glen Campbell Los Angeles Open Golf Tournament following our boxing coverage. Final seconds, round eight of the scheduled ten rounder. And we'll have it for you here on the CBS Sports Spectacular, along with the European Figure Skating Championships. So be sure and join us next Saturday. This is round number eight as we look at Luke Capuano, the local favorite here. About 1,800 or 2,000 Chicago fans at the Conrad Hilton hoping for miracles now. Round number nine, sir. Round, round number, number nine. nine. Thank you, Gil. You're welcome, Jimmy. <laughs> They were saying hoping for miracles because he just flattened right out on the eighth round, gentlemen, and he's really just got to pull something out of because Rossman has taken command. Capuano appears to have shot his bolt in the fifth round. He has another cut over that left eye, Tim. It looks real, real bad now. Gone backwards from uh, his championship days after the, the win over Galindo. I tell you, he's not, he's not the same fight with Paul Galindez, but he's, he's the, the predominant figure in that ring right now. No, he's not the same fighter. Can he be? I think he can. Well, how he good was he when he beat Galindez? He was a heck of a fighter. I thought, I, I really liked the way he fought, the way he moved around, the way he did his thing. Uh, I think if he gets his head on straight, he's going to lick an awful lot of people. Luke Capuano on the right of your screen. His biggest payday ever. And he's earning it. And he's earning it. 20 wins, 3 defeats, 19 knockouts. Earned this rematch and a good performance against Rossman last November. Rossman has fought himself into some kind of shape in this fight. He's a lot better now than he was in the first five rounds. Punching some crisp, sharp, pushing together. Well, he's doing his thing experience-wise. He's manhandling the couple on to his side now, tying him up. He's never in no danger of getting nailed. That's what he's doing. Well, here comes Luke. I think he's going to make one big effort right now, Ange. This has got to be it for him. Up. Under a minute to go in the ninth round. Certainly a willing worker, and this is more his style. Just walk in, bowl, and bang to the body, keep the pressure on. He's only been this far once before. Doing a lot of head work now, Tim. I don't mean thinking either. <laughs> Under 30 seconds to go in the ninth round. Missed with that overhand right lead. He hasn't been able to hurt Rossman with that at all in this fight. Coming to the end of round number nine, it's scheduled for 10 here in Chicago. Coming up shortly, we'll be going out to Los Angeles for the Glen Campbell Los Angeles Open with Johnny Miller in the lead. If we look at Luke Capuano, the hometown favorite here, who has his work cut out for him with the final round coming up the way we see it. Mike Rossman from Philadelphia, the former champion who beat Victor Galindez, defended against Aldo Traversero, and lost it back to the late Victor Galindez in April of 79. Since then, a rocky road on the comeback trail. Well, this is the round where there is no more. Go out and do it if you're going to do it, because there's plenty of time to rest in the dressing room, Gil. That's right. He just doesn't have a leg under him, though, Andrew. His, his legs won't carry his weight. Mike can twist him and turn him any way he wants to. Now, all he has to do is faint step to the side. One thing you have to be impressed about Rossman is uh, excellent conditioning for this fight, as he was for the fight in November. That's that experience, Then, When you're experienced, you can go those mounds. Very important.
one thing Ross McCann do is wing with this kid. He was able to get nailed with one of those winging shots himself. See? He really came close that time, Ange. It could have been all she wrote. It would have been a rocky finish. Capilano trying to provide it for his Chicago fans. He's sure working hard in this last round. Yeah, but you see, he doesn't have any legs. Just a little slap. Took him right off his legs that time. Rossman scoring inside. Capuano doing all he can do. Come forward, throw punches, and he just hasn't got much left in the way of stamina. Mike doesn't have to stay there. The only thing Capuano can do is lean on him, and he just got hurt with the right hand. It's there, take it, take it, uppercut. We're in the final round here in Chicago. It's there, Michael. It's there, baby. It's there, Bomber. Same punch. Same punch, Michael. There you go, go, Michael, go. Rossman again flat footed against the ropes and able to score well against Capuano. Yeah. Only just thing Capuano right has to do right now, Tim, is look to stay in there to, and last the, the fight because he's out of there. Because he's allowed to get, get himself knocked down right now. That's right. Doesn't have a leg on him. Mike gives himself a little room now. He can probably knock him down. We're in the final minute. Two hard working light heavyweights. Getting this dining room crowd their money's worth here this afternoon. Capuano's fighting in slow motion now. No Go direction. Bomber! Go bomber! Well, that's credited to no Mike Rossman for a real good fight. Under 30 seconds to go in the fight. Capuano's going to hang into the finish, it looks like. Game performance. Capuano. Final seconds of the fight. Two tired fighters head to their corners. And Luke Capuano, as he was the last time, a little more tired than Mike Rossman. The decision will be rendered by the referee, Stanley Berg, and the judges, Larry Rosadia and Tony Perez. And Luke Capuano is certainly giving his uh, hometown fans here in Chicago his best effort. But uh, the way we see it, at least, probably not good enough against the more experienced Mike Rossman, who won a very close split decision over him last November. Well, also, the crowd probably sees it way, that way too, Tim. They're not too enthusiastic. They're not making any noise right now. I don't think they expect Get the well, for Mike Rossman, uh, should he be the victor? Uh, he's talking about perhaps one more fight and then another run at the title. We'll have to see. He's had an up-and-down career throughout his young boxing life. Whether or not uh, he'll get himself another title chance in the near future uh, remains to be seen. The next fight for him certainly could be a key one, who that opponent would be. And, what kind of a fight it would be for a Michael Rossman who seems to be struggling as much with his own uh, personal demons and problems as he is in the ring. But today, uh, certainly a, a good performance from the point of view of uh, being in shape and being physically ready for this fight. He took some shots, but he dished out more of them, it would appear. Here's the decision. For his votes, 48-43, Rossman. Judge Larry Rosadilla, 48-43, Rossman. And Stanley Berg, the referee, scores the fight the same way, 48-43, winner, Rossman. An unanimous decision for Mike Rossman over the hometown hero, Luke Capuano, and Ben Bentley with the decision for you. So Mike Rossman continues on his comeback trail. And for Angelo Dundee and Gil Clancy, this is Tim Ryan saying so long from Chicago, Illinois. Stay tuned now for the Glen Campbell Los Angeles Open. The Sunday CBS Sports. What about tonight?